So we're going to code together an implementation of a stack using a linked list. Usually we wouldn't do this. I just want to be like super upfront about that. An array or more often an array list is a really good implementation for a stack. And in fact, in our, our maze lab, our summative programming lab coming up next week, you will implement a stack using an array list. Today, we're going to implement a stack using a linked list, um, more just to show how we can leverage what we've done with a linked list, but present a stack-like interface and implement those like particular stack methods like push and pop that we know and love. Um, but I do want to be upfront that usually we're going to use an array for this instead. Um, so in the linked list stack class, there's some code already written. All the Java comments are already written. Um, the static node class is already um, defined down here at the bottom. We're just going to implement some of those stack methods. And this is going to seem very familiar to um, what we've been doing. So it's actually a nice reinforcement of, of some of these concepts. So our linked list stack class has one and only one instance variable called first, just like our linked list class, very similar so far. When we make a new linked list stack, we initialize first to null to be explicit that, hey, if first has a value of null, that means the stack is empty. Um, and so the first thing we're going to implement is the, um, the method that adds an element to the top of the stack. And so the method header for that and the method name for that with a stack is called push. So we're going to implement the push method um, and we're going to add the element to the top of the stack. Let's visualize what that actually looks like. All right, so here is a diagram of how we could do a stack as a linked list. Okay. So when we add an element, when we push an element on top of the stack, we're going to add the new node to become the first node in the linked list. Okay. So the code we're writing for push here is literally exactly the same code as we wrote for add first. Okay. We're calling the method push because that's the standard method name when we deal with a stack. Um, but we are going to create a new node. We're going to set that new nodes next to refer to what was the first one. So we can use first stored in the stack object to refer to that. And then we'll change first to refer to the new node. Just like yesterday and just like earlier this week, the order in which we update these references is critical. So let's see what this looks like. So first things first, let's make a new node, new node, and then let's initialize the data. So we'll say new node.data equals element. And then we have two references to update and the order matters. We first have to update the next instance variable of our new node to refer to this.first because we need to link the new node to such that next refers to what currently is the first node. And then we can say this.first equals new node to link that up. And again, just to reinforce that these four lines of code are exactly the same as the four lines of code we wrote for add first. I think, maybe we should check. Let's see. Here we broke it out more into the three steps, but yeah, same lines of code. That's great. Okay. All right. Well, the next method we implement for a stack is the method that removes the element from the tap of the stack. And that we call pop. I don't have a remove one, do I? Oh, I do. Here we go. The lower part of the diagram here, removing an element. So when we pop the element, it comes off the top of the stack, which in this current implementation is the, the front of our linked list, the first element in our linked list. So we want to remove this node. We'll return its data. We need to change first to refer to the second node in the list. 
we can get at that by saying first.next refers to the second node. So pop is going to look like this. And again, this is exactly the same implementation as remove first. We do need to check if um, there are any nodes in our stack. So if this.empty, and we'll implement empty in a moment. It's not happy with us right now because we haven't implemented this method. But if the stack is empty, we're going to throw a new no such element exception. And this is something you're going to have to take care of next week when you implement your stack in queue, is that you throw all the right extensions at all the right times. We're going to need to return the value, the data of that node, the value of the element. So let's grab that before we lose track of it. So this.first.data is what we're going to return. But before we return it, we need to change that the first node in our linked list is now going to refer to first.next. So this isn't exactly the same as remove first. If I recall correctly, in remove first, we actually checked if first was equal to null, and that triggered our exception. Here we're calling the empty method because I want to implement that um, and have you see that, but conceptually exactly the same code. All right. Wow, I put a lot of blank lines in here. All right. Checks whether the stack is empty, public, Boolean, empty. Return this.first equals null. If this.first equals null, that's our definition of an empty linked list, and therefore the stack is empty. And now everything compiles, which is great. So I, I was saying like usually we would use an array list to implement a stack. Um, I'm going to try to make like some authentic connections and share some of these for you. Um, when it comes to performance, there's a lot of things to consider, right? There's like best case and worst case performance. There's average case performance. But for some systems, um, what really matters is that the performance is deterministic. Um, and so you don't want like to occasionally have a really bad like worst case performance you'd rather have a slower normal case performance um that you can count on um and this is especially important things called like real time systems um where real time systems are responding usually to some sort of like real world hardware code needs to run at certain like loop rates um and if something slows that down, then like bad things happen. You lose control of like your automation system um, or you miss important data. And so you might opt to build a stack using a linked list because you know that you always have that hit, sure, of get making a new node and updating those references. Is that slower than an array? Sure, it's definitely slower than an array. But will you ever run into that case where your array gets full and think, Think back to like how an array list works. When the array gets full, we double the size of the array. That's a big memory allocation. And then we have to copy every element from the old array to the new array before we can push on the new value, right? That's a huge performance hit, but it only happens like when we run out of room in the array. So generally it's not that bad, but if you're running a real time system, you can't like deal with that. Um, that would be unacceptable. So that's why you might use something like something more deterministic, like a linked list to implement your stack, if you were coding for that type of a system. So if we switch over here to stack demo, oh, I commented this differently for some reason, we can delete the block comment, um, and then we can run this, and we can see that we're gonna push Tom, Diana, Harry, and then we're just gonna pop them all off, and we wanna make sure it comes off in the right order. We expect Harry to be popped off first because it was pushed last. 
So last in, first out. Looks good. <laughs> 